Having discussed the uh, background today, uh, strategic business planning, formulation, implementation, evaluation, concepts that I shared with you in terms of value proposition, vision, mission, difference between industry, market, and so forth. Let's have a look at the formulation part of the business plan. And you recall that we discussed, and I think most of you agreed, that is, it makes a lot of sense to keep the formulation as formulation and not try to have implementation stages, steps as to what we're going to do about everything at that level. That comes under implementation, which we covered after this session. Let's have a look at the formulation. The formulation essentially is embodied in the first uh, part of the business plan after background information in the context of marketing plan or you know, a, a, a compilation that resembles marketing plan. A marketing plan on its own can be a quite a significant large undertaking and document. What we need to consider here and bear in mind that when we're doing a full strategic plan or business strategy, the marketing plan needs to be scaled within that operation. Otherwise, what it might cause is a fatigue by the user or by the planner because you still got implementation, processes, procedures, finances, financials. So we need to scale it down. Calibrate it for a strategic business planning context. So the marketing plan elements that I would like to discuss with you now within formulation part of the business plan renders it render themselves into this calibrated version of a marketing plan. A marketing plan demonstrates firstly two things. It needs to look at the external as well as internal aspects of the business. Firstly, it needs to look at what's happening outside the business. Now, there are a range of strategic concepts that people call it, uh, external market concepts or um, uh, terminology like that, as opposed to internal concepts, which is a resource-based view of the strategy. And you can cover that in the, in the literature yourself. But basically, external versus internal, resource-based plan versus external markets, these two need to be covered within the marketing plan because indeed is the matching and the gap analysis of these two which feeds into our implementation programs. When we go to external plans, firstly, I suppose it's good to have a look at the macro environment, the bigger picture. And you know there are tools like PESTEL, political, economic, social, t technology, economic, law, legal, f f models like that, and PESTEL is a very good one that it can be used to have a look at the macro environment. Then you look at the microeconomic environment, and the, one of the very good models for that is the Michael Porter's five forces model that looks at the you know, degree of rivalry, threat of substitution, you know, um, threat of new entry, and so forth. The five elements that encapsulates the micro environment. It's important to do a competitive analysis, and in our theoretical framework and the software that is associated with it. We've got a, quite a good effective marketing uh, competitive analysis within the marketing section. Again, we're just looking at external. It's important to have a look at risk analysis. And we have had a, a, a little session yesterday about risk, what do you mean by risk? Degree of impact, possibility of uh, likely, likely, likelihood of uh, occurrence, systematic, non-systematic. And uh, then we turn our focus into our internal aspects of the market, marketing plan, formulation, within formulation. There are tools like a SWOT, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threat, and most of you are familiar with, that we can apply within the internal part of the business. Or the model like Profit, P-R-O-F-T, that looks at different types of assets within the company, physical, um, operational, financial. So we've got models like that in our software too. Therefore, the first part of the marketing plan within the formulation part of the marketing strategy looks at external environment with the tools that I just described to you, internal environment. The other, and then in the implementation sector, we get back to this. It doesn't do anything about implementation, just formulates. The next level of a marketing plan, then it comes into a series of breakdown starting with segmentation, segmenting our market if necessary. 
I'll get back to this methodology for segmentation. Then within X, each segment, and may it be sub-segments, we require to cover other elements of a marketing plan. Calibrated, condensed within the strategic business plan. These are, although there's a lot of jargons used, but essentially there are things like products and services we offer, pricing and positioning, distribution channels, advertising and promotions, selling a strategy. So basically we say in segmentation, to whom and where we're going to sell these products. When we segment the market, what is it that in that particular segment we want to sell? Products and packaging. At what price and at what level do we want to pitch our products and services? Pricing and positioning. How do we tell the intended clients or customers about our value proposition, unique selling proposal of our products and services? Advertising and promotion. Having decided where we go, to whom and where we're going to sell, what we're going to sell, what price we're going to sell, how are we going to tell them about it? How do we get it to them? How do we deliver the services and goods? Distribution and channels. All this is still marketing, costs money, the last element. Once we have the client interested, how do we actually transact the sale? Sell a strategy, selling a strategy, selling tactics. So within a segment, you need to identify each one of those which our software covers. But let me share with you a couple of foundation elements in terms of segmentation. Segmentation of a market is not a simple filing exercise. The only requirement is to segment if two fundamental economic concepts exist, which I will describe in example. But in terms of its uh, description is if the price elasticity of demand is different within different parts of the market, there is a case for segmentation. And or if there are no signaling between these parts of the market, or if a signal is of no value in terms of recipients, there's a case for segmentation. Price elasticity of demand is how much demand changes for each unit of price change. You can cover that in economic theory. Signaling is a value to the market in uh, market player in terms of uh, the recipient's perception. So if you've got a market which is a luxury market, there is a jumper or there is a sun pair of sunglasses, branded, worth a lot of money, expensive. And we have the same thing in the uh, weekend markets, similar jumper or similar pair of glasses. These two market segments have significantly different price elasticity of demand. In the first one, if you increase the value of an expensive jumper by 5 or 6 percent, doesn't make much difference. The luxury buyer wants a brand, and they have got the capacity and economic power to buy it, probably. In the other one, if you change the price a little bit, the weekend uh, buyer, a frugal buyer, might not buy. So it's different price elasticity of demand. These two can be separated. If somebody came and told the uh, wealthy buyer in the first segment, hey, look, there are cheap things in the um, weekend markets, that's not of value to them. That's not what they want. They want the brand. They want the prestige and vice versa. If you go and tell those people you can, these things are very expensive, it's not value. So in this case, without getting too entrenched in this concept, what I'm saying is, what I'm trying to share with you is that there is reason for segmentation. It has to be those elements to segment the market. Otherwise, the market can be just one segment. Once you segment the market, for each segment, you need to describe products and packaging and processing and positioning, selling a strategy, um, advertising and promotion and all that. Why would you be segment, uh, uh, sub-segments? Well, if there is within a segment, there are certain parameters present, we can then sub-segment. We need to consider that once you sub-segment, the complexity of the marketing plan significantly increases. Because then for each sub-segment, you need to require to say what I just said. In fact, in more complex marketing plans outside a strategic business plan, for each one of these, you might have to explain the uni uni unique selling proposition, USP. Whereas in our system, you just do the USP at the top before you segment. 
to make it calibrated for the strategic business plan. So we go to the segmentation and the criteria I mentioned, that the reason for segment. And then how do you segment? The first level of segmenting is, should be done by the well-established classifications, either by geographical segmentation, psychographic segmentation, that, or buyer's behavior segmentation. But what we need to do, if we decide to segment, stay with the same criterion at that level. The error occurs when, people seg when, a, when a planner segments one segment based on geographical, another segment based on psychographic, another segment based on product lines. United States market, wealthy buyers, jumpers, product line. Now, the best thing is first, do we need to segment? I, I described the criterion for you briefly. And if you do it, stick with the same criterion right across. And those criteria are well established. Geographical, psychographic, micro behavior, demographic, socioeconomic. Back to my point about sub-segmentation. When we sub-segment, if we require sub-segment, then the same criteria applies. However, it could also be that one of those sub-elements, pricing and positioning, products and services, distribution channels, advertising and promotion, selling a strategy, are so significantly different within parts of this segment than they decide to sub-segment that segment. It's because these elements here are so different that we decide to get this segment and break it down into two different segments, sub-segments. Again, once we do that, we need to describe all these say, elements again, and the complexity increases. But it could be so critical that we need to do that. So marketing plan calibrated within a strategic plan. It needs to require the external environment. I described some tools for that. It needs to look at internal environment. I described some tools with that. Then it comes and decides whether we got a segment or not. We describe some criteria for that. And within that segmentation, do we need to sub-segment or not? We describe some criteria for that. We said that we stick with the same criteria, and the sub-segmentation can be different criteria. When you sub-segment, it can be on different criteria. But the first level of segmentation is to be with the same criterion. And once, if you've got sub-segments, we have these elements associated with it. The outcome of a marketing plan at the end of the exercise is simply a series of sales projections and the cost of those sales in terms of resources required for marketing and selling. There's no other elements within marketing plan inside the strategic business plan that's required. Later on, the implementation looks at that and puts implementation processes and procedures, and perhaps single programs, which we cover later to provide the implementation steps for this marketing plan. External, internal. Segmentation, yes or no. Same criterion. Sub-segmentation could have different criteria based on the elements of it, yes or no. Sales, each segment or each sub-segment, cost each segment or sub-segment. That is a condensed, calibrated marketing plan that covers the formulation of a strategic business plan within the overall program.